Hello there. I'm so glad you could join. Hello there. I'm so glad you could join us for this evening's trip to the Indigo Gallery. There's a really beautiful exhibition being shown there tonight, ideal for busy minds that need a little space to slow down and gently come to rest. Each night, we like to start with a short wind down. Tonight's wind down is a meditation technique called noting. It's particularly helpful if you're troubled by a busy mind when you're trying to get to sleep. You can even use it if you wake up in the night. We're going to be counting our breaths and then just gently noting thoughts and feelings if they arise. We're not trying to replace them with anything else. We're simply labeling thinking as thinking, feeling as feeling. It may sound incredibly simple, but it can help to create distance between ourselves and the thought, ourselves and the feeling, and that creates a more restful state of mind. In other words, the perfect state of mind for gentle, restful sleep. So to begin with, just take a moment or two to get comfortable. Make sure you're nice and cool. Just starting with some nice, big, deep breaths. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And with the next out breath, allow the breath to return to its natural rhythm in and out through the nose. And just feeling the weight of the body pressing down into your bed. And in your own time, start to count the breaths as they pass. One with the rise, two with the fall, just up to a count of ten. When you get to ten, you can stop and start again at one. And remember, any time you get distracted, the moment you realize you're distracted by thought, simply note it, hmm, thinking, and return to the breath. Or, if a feeling arises, hmm, feeling, and return to the breath. That noting is very gentle, not harsh at all. Think of it like a feather just gently touching the surface of a crystal glass. I'm going to give you a few moments just to keep counting the breath and noting any thoughts and feelings that arise.
that's great. Now you're feeling nice and relaxed. You're ready for our journey through the Indigo Gallery. This is going to be the perfect way to wind down after your day. For a start, there are none of the usual crowds gathering around in groups to see the works of art you've come to see. The gallery is completely empty. There's only us here. The space has been opened late, especially for us. It's so nice and calming to be inside these large, airy rooms, which have been made available just for us to walk through. There's also something else very special about what we're going to see. All the artworks in this exhibition exist in the same color, the color blue. This is going to be a real treat for your senses. Did you know one great painter got so obsessed with blue, he spent many years painting in no other color. Blue can have that effect. This particular work in front of us has the most calming effect on the eyes. At the heart of it is a small square in what you might describe as midnight blue. It's like watching a section of the most perfect night sky somewhere far away after a day walking through a town you visited for the first time. When your body is relaxed and your senses tired from all the strange and interesting things you've looked at, Around the blue square is another blue square in an even darker blue than the one at the center. When did midnight ever get this blue? The square, in fact, is so blue it's almost the color of ink. The word that comes to mind for this blue is expansive. We're looking at the most expansive blue imaginable. The only sound around us is the air conditioning unit, a gentle hum that is almost not there at all, just enough to remind us of the quiet of everything else. Have you ever noticed how colors are increased when there is less sound? In this exhibition, shapes seem to be changing even as you look at them. Here is a scene on a beach painted over a hundred years ago. As you look, the people remind you of leaves falling gently in the breeze, and the leaves are blue. Everything in this exhibition really is in blue. But then, Blue is such a calming color, so why not stay with it for a while? The people that are now leaves are turning to water in the painting. 
Or perhaps it's the paint itself beginning to run down the canvas as you watch the painting. We can almost hear the sound of the water as it twists and collects back into one gently running stream. When we take a step back for a better look, the pattern resolves itself into a tree. A tree that was in the picture all along. Whatever made you think it was a beach? There are no pictures in this room. Above the gentle soothing hum of the air conditioner, a calming voice is speaking the names of specific tints of blue. After each name, the speaker leaves a pause, as if inviting you to repeat the words in your head. As you're lying back now, moving deeper in this journey through the exhibition, try repeating the names of these blues in your head. Sky Blue Periwinkle Powder Blue Ice Blue Morning Blue Medium Blue Egyptian Blue Indigo Ultramarine Dark blue. Dark blue. Resolution blue. Sapphire. Liberty. That last blue sounds so soothing, the voice in the room says it again. Liberty. In this spacious white room, there's actually nothing of any color at all. A gentle, rhythmic tick-tock sound draws you to a sculpture at the center of the room. The pendulum sound is so very soothing. This is a work of wonderful imagination. The pendulum is very similar to those on grandfather clocks. At the top is a wooden box from which you might expect a cuckoo to appear. After every ten or so ticks of the pendulum, the box opens. And there isn't a bird in there at all, but a bowl of water. The bowl fills from a little fountain that takes its source from somewhere you can't see. Perhaps there is a water source behind the clock? In the indigo gallery, it's best to simply go with the flow. The sound of the running water might remind you of some of the loveliest places you've been in the past. Perhaps a stream you lay down next to on a summer's day. Let's stop and listen for a while. After all, we have this whole space to ourselves. As you listen, you realize that the third sound in the room is just as relaxing, the gentle hum of the air conditioner. This is a wonderful soundscape, the swinging pendulum, 
the running water and the air conditioner. Have you ever noticed before how some things are made more blue by the white that surrounds them? This is certainly the case here in this room that is filled with cloud formations. It's hard to know exactly how the artist has achieved this, but by now we're so lost in this new world of billowing whiteness, it's probably best just to immerse ourselves in it, to become part of the clouds. As we move through the room, the thinner clouds pass over our heads as a fuller pillow-like cumulus surrounds us. Being inside a cloud is pretty much as you'd expect. Calm, silent, and very soft. Clouds have a slight taste to them too. Somewhere between rain and cotton candy. Can you taste the clouds? On the other side of the clouds, the gulls are soaring as if heading to a nearby sea. If we listen closely enough, we can hear the sound of a lapping ocean. The cloud passes over us as we realize we've arrived inside sky blue. We're actually inside the color itself. How wonderful this is. Are we floating? Maybe the gulls are taking us with them through the exhibition to the sea? How did we get to feel so buoyant with all the weights falling from us through this blue room? If there weren't so many other things to see in this exhibition, we could quite happily stay here forever. In this room, there seems to be nothing at all. No artworks on the walls or sculpture at the center of it. In the middle of the room is a table and on it are some very small and beautiful books. The texture of the paper is very smooth and you see how they've been put together by hand with great love and care. You open the first book to find there are only very few words on each page, each of them printed in light blue ink. You read the first pages, seeing that each set of words are set across from each other on the page, mirroring each other, gently waiting, waiting gently. You turn the page and it reads, blue light, light blue. You open the next book, which is a different kind of book altogether, one that gives instructions on how to make blue. What's strange about these recipes for blue is that no paints of any kind are needed. In fact, these recipes for blue are made from simply adding together a number of things that are already blue. To make blue, you will need a color wheel of blue things, the book says. A blue can be made from adding 
any two blue things together for a deep blue. Add together a blue beach ball and a wet elephant. If you want to lighten the tint, feel free to add some blueberries. If you want your blue to last longer, simply add bubble gum. As you become an expert in mixing up blues, you can try out things like blue lava, which looks like ice but is hot to touch. As you're finding, not everything that is blue is what it seems. Let's place the book back for now. We are entering a long white room with nothing on the walls. As we walk forward, we realize that there's another room next to this one, then another room after that. The room we've walked into is, in fact, three rooms. As we walk into the middle room, a light comes on. The color of the light would probably best be described as azure blue, but maybe we want to call it azure. Azure is a nice word to say, and this is a nice excuse to say it. Or perhaps, after all, the color is lapis lazuli, the color of a gemstone. Being inside the light gives a feeling of buoyancy, of being lifted from the everyday weight of things. The room to your right has its own kind of light, like a field of cornflowers. Let's imagine walking through the field of cornflowers until you're so tired you just want to lie down on a soft bed of flowers. The room to your right is lit in a deeper blue, a blue that is almost black. This must be the midnight blue room. It's like the darkest summer sky on an evening of serenity when the party is over and you find a rare moment to be yourself, alone in nature, just before the long overdue sleep washes over you. It will be a night to sleep with the window open, an owl somewhere gently hooting, and the grasshoppers calling. A night when, after all the blue artworks you've seen, you fall asleep, dreaming of the sea. As we enter this room, we stop in front of a small lake which has been positioned at its center. The only sound is that of the water lapping against the concrete of the lake's edge and the gentle hum of the air conditioner. The water in the lake is so incredibly clear, crystal in its clarity. We can see through the water to its blue depths. In the water are all kinds of colorful and unusual creatures, tropical fish 
which are orange, yellow, and pink, are moving slowly along the bottom in slow, looping patterns. An irresistible urge to touch the water comes over you and you walk to its edge to dip in your hand. All we feel is the surface of the gallery floor. There's no water there at all. As we look up to the ceiling to see a light projecting the images downwards. Now onto us and the floor beneath. It has all been a trick of the eye. How can an illusion bring such serenity and calm? We walk across the projection of the lake and the swimming fish as if walking across the water itself. Our visit through the Indigo Gallery is coming to an end. Our senses are tired after such a rich and stimulating experience. It's fine now to give in to the urge to just lie still and rest, letting the colors and shapes we've seen run through our minds again. The blue pictures. The clock sculpture. The clouds. The little books and the light room might all appear like a dream, but they were all made by artists for our pleasure. Should we make a date to come here again? Until then, just let the ripple effect of all those different words for blue run through your mind. Sky blue. Deep blue, midnight blue, indigo, duck blue, dark blue, sapphire, morning blue. Medium blue, Egyptian blue, ultramarine, resolution blue, liberty. <laughs>